Hey watch friends, today we're going to take a look at a pair of watches from the Singapore based micro brand Reverie. This model is simply known as the Diver, but what it lacks in fanciful name as we'll talk about throughout this video, I found that this more than makes up for in the overall style, the design language, and the value that you're getting for this. But before we get into the specifics, I did want to note, while this video is not sponsored, this these two watches were loaned to the channel by my good friend Geo with the uh, micro brand dealer stitches and buckles. I'll have a link in the video description. If you're not familiar with them, I do encourage you to check them out. Additionally, we'll talk about later on in the video, I do have an exclusive discount code if you're interested in picking either of these up. So I do encourage you to take advantage of that. And of course, that'll be in the description as well. I will note, before you go to their site, do be aware the prices default in Singaporean dollars. So if the prices look higher than we talk about here and you're looking for US dollars, do make sure you select that option. It's down at the bottom of the website. So before we get into the specifics of these watches, let's go ahead and take a quick look at what you get with the packaging. Shifting over to the included accessories, you do get, it comes in this uh, nice watch roll here. As we see, this is branded for this one right here. This is actually, in many respects, kind of similar to the ones that come with the, uh, the Zelos uh, models there as well. Additionally, um, this does come, as far as accessories, it does come with the bracelet. And then as we saw, that rubber strap, that is included standard as well. Once you flip that open, you do have nice microfiber cloth that's included in there. It's a great to, uh, to keep the watch clean. And it does come with this booklet as well. So overall, I think that this is actually pretty nicely equipped. And this is probably the largest booklet that I've seen, especially on a micro brand um, here. I'm going kind of quickly through this, but it just gives you all the specifics, how to use a micro adjustment, how to adjust the bracelet, how to set the movement. I mean, it goes into a lot of detail here. So pretty uh, crazy packaging overall for this one. I don't know if this comes in a box or not since this was sent in. I received it just in this roll, so I don't know if it comes without outer packaging or not, but this is the way that I received it, and I think it's pretty well done. All right, so now that we've seen what these come with for the packaging, let's go ahead and take a deeper dive into the watches themselves, look at some of the overall specs, and then we'll get a feel for the characteristics. So first, this is going to be coming with a 40 millimeter case, and these are measured on my calipers, so I did validate all these for you. This bezel does step down. This is going to be coming in at a 38 and a half millimeter bezel. The lugs on this, as you can see, they're in atypical design here. However, this is still a 20, uh, standard 20 millimeter lug. So this isn't integrated and it will accept uh, various uh, straps as we'll actually see. And of course we have a pairing here of a couple different strap options. The lug to lug on this is an extremely short 42.6 millimeters. That's measured because of this design, because it doesn't have protrusion, that's measured at the actual case itself. If you include these end links, and I will tell you this is a little deceiving here, these male end links, it measures in right at 50 millimeters, which still isn't too bad. However, the reason I say that's deceiving is as you can see, this has full articulation for that. So in many respects, it almost kind of drapes and functions like a female end link, despite the fact that these are male, but I did want to point that out. So the reality is on wrist, most of the time, they're going to be kind of at this angle, which shrinks that down well below 50. So take that for what you will. I will say on my six and a half inch wrist, as we'll see throughout, I think these fit very well. The overall thickness on this on my calipers is coming in at 12.2 millimeters. So really not too bad at all, especially for a dive watch and for the water resistance, which we'll talk about here momentarily. This one does, as you can see here, have a flat crystal and that is a sapphire with an inner AR coating. The movement on this, and we'll look at this in greater detail, the movement is going to be a Miyoda 9039. There's a preview of that rotor. Wait till we check that out more. I think it's gorgeous. The Miyoda, if you're not familiar with it, that particular movement, really like it a lot. Great power reserve. Uh, the uh, uh, secondhand sweep is going to be nice, nice and smooth. It is a high beat movement. We've looked at a lot of 9015s. If you're familiar with the channel, it's the same, just with no date, uh, date window there. And we've looked at some other 9039s too. For the water resistance, this one is coming standard with 200 meters or 20 atmospheres. So plenty uh, reasonable, especially for a uh, relatively svelte uh, dive watch. For the weight, looking at these two here, and of course, obviously we have the burgundy, and this is what I believe they refer to as the moss green for this one. And we'll talk about the colors of these a lot uh, throughout the video, because these things are color shift beasts. So it might even on your screen right now, not necessarily be looking like a uh, light green. This one stays pretty true to, uh, to burgundy, though it does shift around, but that green goes all over the map with its color spectrum. So for the weight on this, these are going to be coming in on the bracelet, and this is sized to my six and a half inch wrist. 
this one is coming in at 132.2 grams, whereas on this strap, and this is a factory strap, uh, as you saw there, uh, that does come with it, this one is coming in at 85.4 grams. So really, neither is too bad at all. On uh, being full stainless steel for a case and bracelet, 132 grams, not bad, and 85, definitely not quite uh, at the lightest of, of some that we've had on the channel, but still pretty darn light in it, especially being on rubber. You could actually get that down even less with a thin canvas or something like that. So overall, uh, the, the specs on this, I think, are nice uh, and versatile for the majority of people out there. Uh, they, with the smaller bezel, uh, does uh, kind of work for uh, for smaller wrists. And actually, let's go ahead and give you a quick uh, quick look at, uh, at that on my wrist. I think it fits well. So this is a six and a half inch wrist. I think it fits really nicely on my particular wrist. But I also think that this has enough dial presence, especially with that pop, the guillotine, all those things that we'll look at in finer detail here. I think it has plenty of presence for larger wrists as well. So with that, let's go ahead and actually start looking at some of the characteristics of this. First, for colors. Obviously, we've got the red and green that we're looking at today. Additionally, this is available, as I'll pop up on the screen here, in a blue and a, what they call a, believe, warm gray. Uh, so it's kind of a gray or a silver color. Additionally, as you transition over to the dial itself, you can see the pattern on this is absolutely gorgeous. It has this center guilloche, which has almost like a wave type pattern to that. You can see the intricacies of it has the, the ridges uh, that go through with the wave pattern inlaid. I found that this gives exceptional light play all the way around. Really nice to look at. And that wave pattern is something we'll see more of throughout this piece. I think it's really integrated well. Looking at the outer perimeter, you can see this does have a gorgeous sunburst effect to that. So it's just nice radial brushing for that that picks up. And I find the light play between the two, it's so intoxicating to look at. It's hard to decide whether you'd rather look at the guilloche or whether you want to spend more time looking at the sunburst. Either way, very, very nice to look at. Like that quite a lot. The color shift. As we talked about here and as you've seen across some of this different lighting, this especially on the green, but though really both of them, it color shifts so dramatically. With the green especially, I have found that this one can go from looking like a very deep like forest or hunter green to almost a brown color to a gray color. It really goes all over the map depending on the way the light's hitting it. Very, very cool. I like that quite a lot. Looking at the rehot on this, you can see that around the perimeter, it does have nice, clear, distinct markings for your minute and seconds there. You have diamonds at the five positions, and then you just have simple dots going around for the rest of it. Nicely done there as well. Shifting over to the hardware, the first thing that I'm sure catches your eyes is that custom skeletonized, what I would call like a diamond uh, handset for that, almost like a sword, but it does come down straight to the point at the base as well. That skeletonization is well done, high polished throughout, and of course a large surface area for the loom to be applied. And we'll talk about the loom here more in just a moment. If you look at the second hand, you can see that the second hands on both models, or I should say all models, is going to come uh, standard with a, an accent color for that. And it does match the dial text that you'll see uh, down towards the bottom there or at the six o'clock position. And of course, the, the second hand integration. I really like on the wine in particular. This one, it's tough to tell. It almost looks like a light gray a lot of times on camera and sometimes in person as well. However, it is a very, very subtle uh, lavender or uh, what have you uh, color for that. So I think it's very nice touch and I like that a lot. I'm personally a big fan of pastel purple. So that was uh, great for me. And as you see there on the uh, tip of the uh, second hand for the balance, you do have the integration of the diamond as well. So it sticks cohesively through that. And I think that's really a running theme for this. I think they really thought out the design of this watch quite a lot. Looking at the batons, you can see that this does have consistent baton uh, markers rather um, all the way uh, around the perimeter there. The only differentiation is at the 12 o'clock, you do have a double baton set up there. I like the way that this integrates where it comes out, almost kisses the outer perimeter to come up to that guilloche, not right on the edge, gives you just a little bit of setback. I think it's a nice, uh, nice touch where it looks just clean and cohesive uh, all the way around. I will say these batons with being on the skinnier side, let's go ahead and pop up that loom shot. As you can see, it is a relatively delicate application of the loom. It actually reminds me kind of of the Zelos Nova on the markers, which is to say, I do wish they'd pack in a little more for that, but really not too bad. The hands, particularly the, uh, the hour and second hand, do have a nice application of loom as far as surface area. And the second hand is going to have just a delicate tip colored to the end. Going back to the handset, as we saw, and this, this is true for the markers as well, you do have a full, very attractive polish as well. So that just gives even more uh, light play for that. 
So overall, I think the aesthetic of this looks great for the overall dial configuration. Now, transitioning over to the bezel, as you can see right off the bat, there are two different bezel options available. You have on the right here on this green, this one's going to be a 12 hour bezel. And then on the left, you have just a traditional dive bezel on this burgundy. So you do have the option of either of those two. Both of them, whichever configuration you go with, and you can get any of the four colorways, you get to pick the bezel for that. Both of them are going to be 120 click unidirectional. So they do stick with the dive theme, regardless of which style you go with. The dial finishing, as you can see, these are all going to have stainless steel for them. And they do have, I believe, a black enamel. Certainly uh, presents like a black enamel to me. Gives nice contrast and legibility. At the 12 o'clock position, it does have a loom pip, as we saw in the loom shot. Looking at the edge of the bezel, this one does have a very clear coin edge. Very traditional. Not, uh, not real pronounced for that. Has adequate grip. Does not have a ton of surface area, but I find that it works pretty well. So while we're talking about that, let's go ahead and actually... There you go. So listening to that, you know, to me, this has a little bit of a tinny sound to it. It's very, very tactile, nice clicks, good, uh, good movement overall. It's not my uh, most, uh, it's not one that, uh, that excites me the most of, uh, of any watch here uh, as far as the bezel sound. Um, but that being said, it's nothing to complain about. And honestly, it's so nitpicky for, uh, for that. And it's a trivial detail. But as you can see, hopefully this is picking up adequately there. The alignment on this, I found to be solid on both of these, these pieces. So that's, Good, uh, good quality control and attention to detail there. Always uh, pleased with that. Transitioning over now to the case. As we can see here with the case, this does have a mix of brushing as well as the polish, particularly at the top. I always like a nice touch of polish around the lip and edge. I'm not too huge of a fan of uh, loads of, uh, of polish around. I think this one has just the right touches. It actually reminds me kind of a, of a Zellos Mako, uh, the way that they integrated that in throughout there. The edges are not sharp. Everything is nice, uh, nice radius. Feels great on, uh, on the wrist for overall comfort. The uh, main thing to look at here, and we already talked about this a little bit, the lugs. You know, you don't have the traditional lug protrusion. These are actually kind of cut in. And let's go ahead and flip that over and take a look at how that goes in. So they're actually, it's not integrated like it looks. It's actually just tucked in under and then the case comes up over top. So that gives a really unique style. So it really has a deep lug cut for that. But then the way the case comes over, it looks like a traditional configuration. So that's a really neat, uh, neat touch. And I like that a lot. It's a definitely very out of the box approach for this one. Additionally, the finishing I have found on this across the board in all areas to be really, really well done. It is, I mean, for the, for the money, I think it's pretty exceptional. Again, it puts me in mind of my gold standard for, uh, for micro brands. And that is Zellos for finishing quality of this. I think you're getting a lot, uh, getting a lot for your money and really uh, excellent. Additionally, as you can see here with the case shape, this does have slightly downturned lugs. I think it has a nice case, uh, case flow to that all the way around, and I'm sure that that lends to the overall comfort I've experienced. For the crown, this one does have a screw down crown, and this one is measuring in at 5.8 millimeters. So on the smaller side, and it does have uh, knurling here. I found it's not too bad to grip a hold of. It's not the grippiest in the world and certainly not the biggest in the world, but really no complaints there. I think it sticks out far enough that it's easy, uh, easy to get a hold of. Additionally, you might have noticed this does have, of course, polishing there. And this one actually is signed, but it's a reverse sign there. So the logo is actually raised up. I think that's a nice clean touch. And I like that overall aesthetic. As I mentioned, this is a screw down crown and being a 90, uh, 9039, this one does not have a ghost date position. So it does just go from the rest and winding position out to full stop. And it does of course have hacking for that as well. Looking at the case back, let's go ahead and switch over to the green here, give this one some time. So with the case back on this one, you can see that it does have Again, that wave pattern that we talked about, you can see in the outer case perimeter, these are numbered. There's only 125 for each color. And because the bezels are swappable, that's 125 per color, not for per configuration there. You can see the dial text, or I'm sorry, the case back text rather, all the way around, they stick with the same kind of font through. But the real show, uh, showstopper here is look at that rotor. I, I'm going to say, while this is what's considered, you know, relatively simplistic, it's the nice Miota, but relatively simplistic movement. It's not known for uh, being as well decorated as some, you know, you've got the nice Geneva striping uh, that comes on the, on the 9039. I think that looks nice, but this rotor though, I mean, that is to me, one of the most attractive rotors I've actually personally seen. I like that a lot. It's, it's very relaxing. It's a, uh, 
And actually, while we're looking at that, you can see they even carry that over onto the strap. They carried that wave pattern throughout all of this. And we'll look at that, at that more. But man, I've got to say, I personally, I think it's gorgeous. I love it. Can't, I can't say enough about that. You didn't have to go with any kind of crazy movement here to uh, achieve a really attractive movement. So that's awesome. For the case back, um, this one I neglected to say is screw down, um, as you saw there. And that is part of how they get to 200 meters of water resistance. For the bracelet, this one is going to be coming in on my calipers. Uh, I'm getting 21.6 and that's to the outer perimeter here, so for uh, for the actual edge of this, since that does come to the edge of the case with the way you can see there, that's actually 20 millimeters for the strap. So uh, if you're going for an aftermarket strap, you go 20 millimeters standard size, but it does bump out to 21.6. This does then aggressively taper, and you can see I have a lot of links taken out on this one. You can see more on this side, how aggressive that taper is to get down to the bottom. But this one actually comes down to, on my calipers, 15.9 millimeters down the clasp. I have found that it's not too thin on my wrist and actually lends to great comfort. The overall style, this is kind of an Oyster or three link uh, configuration for this. And as you can see, the brushing does continue throughout. The articulation, let's flip over to this side where we have more links. The articulation, I think, is solid on this and you get decent light play as well. The clasp. This is one that I really want to focus on. So the clasp, this is very reminiscent of the Rolex glide lock system. But if you're not familiar with that, so you have a fold over here. It's a nice thin clasp. I think well finished, does have brushing. I apologize, this does have the stickers on there. I didn't want to take it off since it's not my, uh, my watch here. But this one, as you can see, nice ridge down the middle. Good finishing there. This does have a fold over to secure it. That folds up nicely. And this is pretty cool. So this, you don't see double pushers, but this one is not just a snap style. You actually go in here and you pull that and you can see this part does move. So that's how you open that up. Then once you get inside, this is milled. It might look like a like stamp. Actually, I take that back. This, I, I'm honestly not sure. I can't tell definitively whether this is, is milled or stamped. Either way, I found it to, uh, to be comfortable uh, for that for overall piece. It is definitely not your cheap stamp style. I believe this is milled down, but I can't say definitively, especially with the stickers on. One of the things that's really cool about this, though, with this glide lock system is you actually, this has the best toolless micro adjustment of any style that I've used. I like Zellos, but personally, I think this is even better. It's easier to use. So you can see there, you've got those. All you do is just pull up on that, just pop, and then you just slide it and snap it down to place. And there you go, it's secured. So that's, it's as simple as that to get your micro adjustment in. Really like that a lot. This is fantastic. This for me is the new gold standard of, uh, of micro brand clasp. Of course, again, because this is styled after Rolex, it's a stretch to call it a micro brand, but nonetheless, it's on a micro brand. I'll give them credit for it. I like it a lot. All right, so now that we have a better feel for these watches as a whole, let's go ahead and take a look at some comps for this. And conveniently enough, I actually have an almost identical pair of ones that I've been talking about here. This is Zello's Makos, and you can see I have both of these coincidentally in a burgundy. Uh, these are, of course, both bronze as opposed to the stainless, but I've got a burgundy and then a Forester Hunter green. So let's take a look at these one by one, pull these other watches out of the way here, and take a look at how these compare. So overall, I found the coloration in the center of this Mako to be pretty similar to this. But one thing you'll notice, though, is because this does have, of course, obviously that Whirlpool Guyosh, but because it does have a pretty aggressive Fume for that, it gets a lot darker, almost black on the outer edge, so very dark uh, crimson. Whereas this one, I don't believe has a Fume to it. It does have a lot of light play, but it doesn't appear to get darker, especially if we tip that over there. You can see the clear darkness here, whereas this one, you can see it stays pretty consistently saturated throughout. So they do present very differently. So despite the fact that the base coloration is pretty similar, they look totally different. And I've got to say, I like this one enough. I'm probably going to add another one of these uh, to, uh, to my personal collection here. So have another, uh, another burgundy to show you all soon. All right, so now switching over to the green, you can see this one is just a very different color uh, between these two in many respects. Though if you look at the center, it's still not that far off. This one, I think, takes a little more of like the brown and gray color to it, whereas this is a little deeper into the actual green base color. But they do, I think, present pretty similarly overall, with the exception, of course, with being the Whirlpool versus a completely different guillotine uh, execution on the right here. All right. So now that we have all of that out of the way, let's go ahead and actually grab the right, uh, right watches here. Uh, so now that we have all that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about some of the positives, some of the critiques, and my overall summary for this model. 
So first, for the positives. I've got to say, to me, these are absolutely stunning. I love the dials. I think the configuration's great. The center guilloche. I love the outer sunburst as well, though. I think it's all really, really nicely done. And it actually reminds me a lot, especially with that pattern, of kind of the uh, the second hour Mako, or second hour Mandala, rather, uh, that I was so impressed with on the channel. Um, so that's this, I think, will be a nice complement to that. Certainly a different aesthetic, but a similar overall configuration. And also, just like the second hour, nicely done. The light play. You know, we saw this throughout different conditions. And let's keep flipping around there. This has tons and tons of light play in so many different ways. That center guilloche, the outer perimeter, the rehot. I mean, all of it. And just the complete color shift. I think it's fantastic. Love the light play on this one. The comfort. As we've talked about throughout, the comfort on this I think is really nicely done. No hot spots. Wears well. Not too heavy. Great. I think it's well priced for the money. And speaking of price, this one, as you'll see on the Sishes and Buckles website... Of course, because this is converted, it's roughly going to be about 500 US dollars, but I do have a 10% off uh, code that's available in the video description. So that'll take it down to roughly around 450 US dollars. That's including shipping. I think that's a pretty darn good value for this for a 9039 with this attractive finishing. You get both the bracelet and the strap. Overall, I can't complain there. I think that's pretty solid. The fact that this has bezel options, I think is a nice touch as well. Whether you prefer a 12 hour or you prefer a 60 minute or die bezel, you have either option covered, you get to pay, take your pick. The clasp, as we've already talked about, I think is fantastic. This is going to be my new benchmark for what I, what I compare other clasps against. So great there. And then as we've talked about, the finishing. I think the finishing on these is excellent in all regards. The polishing is clean, the brush lines are tight. Great job overall, especially again for the price. As for cons, really have very, very little. The loom, I think, could certainly have a uh, thicker application, or I should say a heavier application, more layers of loom. The perimeter markers, because they are uh, relatively skinny there and have a delicate, uh, delicate surface area, that I think could be amped up. But additionally, on the handset, I think that could have a little heavier application. Minor complaint, but it's a little thing to note. The only other thing that I have is on this I will say, I wish that they had gone just a tiny, tiny bit skinnier there for the uh, for the bracelet. As you can see there, it does rub if you try to go past. So if you stay on this link, it fits in perfectly and it has no, uh, no uh, resistance to that whatsoever and you can do easy micro adjustments. But if you try to get down to this link, it is just a little bit tight and it does rub there. But that's really it. I mean, as far as these overall packaging, I think they're pretty fantastic. And where does that leave us for summary? I recommend these without any hesitation whatsoever. And like I said, I believe that I'm going to actually go ahead and pick one of these up, probably in this burgundy configuration, though I haven't decided on the bezel yet uh, myself as well. So I hope this video has been helpful for you. If you did enjoy this and you could please hit that uh, like button, it does help the channel. And additionally, if you haven't already, please do hit that subscribe button. Have lot, uh, a lot more content uh, that's coming all the time and it really does help me out greatly. Finally, um, I will have Amazon affiliate links in the description if you'd like to help out the channel that way. I do get a small commission. And if you're looking for me in another medium, you can find me on Instagram. Thanks for watching.